Uh, so you said something I really liked, and maybe if you could just clarify what you mean by it, and then I'll ask my question: Is increased yeah. performance endurance? I mean, is that are you simply is that like basically work capacity sort of? Yeah. So, but so here's how I think of it, right? Like repeat sprintability. If, if we're calling it repeat sprintability, then everybody thinks of if we're taking it literally, it's repeat sprints, right? right? Versus you know the repeated ability to decelerate and accelerate. Sprinting's part of it, so that could be part. Um, what about repeated jumping efforts? That sort of thing. So um, I'm just always trying to think of what are they going to do in their sport? Right. And how can I use my conditioning to better prepare them for it? Yeah, right? I mean, so I, I think that, that changes your mindset, right? Because it's not just, hey, can I do this, let's say, a 10-yard dash. It's not just can I do this for 50 reps or whatever without fatiguing. Like, there's more to every sport than that. It's – can I accelerate and decelerate? Can I jump repetitively when I need to? You know, like right. trying to think more in that, that line. And then if you do that, then it makes kind of your target for where you want your conditioning to be that much easier. Because I think for a, a while, when I started diving into the conditioning stuff, like I just kind of followed like stuff that I could do in the gym right? Like a prowler push or something of that nature versus, okay, but like, how can I make this again, not sport specific, but more contextual to what they're going to do. So a soccer player, I think the literature says something like they're going to have 14 to 1600 changes of pace in a game that could be speeding up, slowing down, changing direction. So it's like, if all I'm doing in the gym to prepare them for sport is just pure sprinting straight ahead, I'd say I'm training the energy system, but I'm not necessarily training the body yep. for the forces that are going to be involved in their sport or, or exposing yep. them to what they're going to see in their sport. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That, no, I like that a lot. Um, so the follow-up then I guess is, and you kind of, I guess you, you just talked about, uh, you know, well, so for you and what you do, like how big a role does, the barbell play in driving that increased performance endurance. So like, just as an example on my end, I have a group right now and I decided to run them through a program where we decreased rest, increased weight and sets over a couple yep. of weeks. Yeah. Yep. Um, yep. As a po cause you know, I'm in Wisconsin. So yep. um, sometimes you just can't run. I have about, 30 yards indoors. You know what I mean? So yeah, I, I know exactly what you mean. So this is a perfect example of you have constraints on what you can do. Right. And hockey's tough because what happens if you don't have a rink? Right. You know, cool dog, by the way. So it's, it's like you, you make, you do the best that you can. Okay. So like if I didn't have access to all this and I had to do it in like a thousand square feet, then the barbell would be a lot better tool. And maybe we'd be doing like squat jumps or something like that, you know, for a football player instead of, um, you know, whatever kind of like explosive upper body work we're going to do. Maybe we would just do more like power endurance work with chains or something like that, or a band to try and make it as fast and explosive as we can. So, you know, I think you're absolutely warranted in that. If you don't have the means to do exactly what you want, you make it as good as you can. Right. So, you know, it's something that, you know, luckily I can do most of what I need to in this space, but man, I would love to on Wednesdays have 60 yards to where I could open these guys up and do a couple forties and expose their hamstrings right. to some top end speed work. I think there's a lot of merit in that, but right now I don't have it. So I got to hedge my bets. I got to make sure my resets are on point. I got to make sure we're getting eccentric hamstring work in you know, throughout the program. So I'm trying to hedge my bets in as many other ways as I can. But no, I think you're absolutely spot on, man. If you can't do exactly what you want, try and regress it back and say, okay, well, how can I make this as specific as possible with the tools that I have? Right. 